Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John Math Tube. And we are in lesson number 9 in the exam preparation series. And these videos are specially designed for the first year engineering students who are under TU affiliated colleges. And as always, how to use these videos effectively. So here we go. 1, 2, 3 and 4. I hope you read these things. I hope you read these things and put them into practice. So let's not waste time. Let's start with polar integrals or multiple integrals in the polar coordinate system. Okay, let's learn this by working out an example. So take a look at the question. In the question, instead of dx and dy, in lesson number 7, we learned how to evaluate multiple integrals in the Cartesian coordinate system. And I am sure that you noticed dx and dy instead of this dr and d theta. So, that gives me a clear idea that this integral is in terms of the polar coordinate variables. Okay, let's read more. So, to evaluate this integral over the area of the cardioid R is equal to A into 1 plus cos theta above the initial line. Okay. I am sure that you know in the Cartesian coordinate system, we have the x-axis and the y-axis and the meeting point will be called the origin. And every point will be given the name x, y. Similarly, in the polar coordinate system, we take one point and one line which is called the initial line and every point will be associated with the distance from the pole and the angle that radius vector makes with the initial line okay so let's check the picture so the cardioid okay look at this before we start multiple integrals especially in polar coordinate system you should be very good with the curves in the polar coordinate system you should be able to identify the equation and you should be able to plot a rough graph okay anyway this is a cardioid and this is the shape and we are interested in the region above the initial line so this is our initial line okay now look at this we cannot draw a vertical strip or a horizontal strip. In the polar coordinate system, we don't have the x-axis or the y-axis. So what we do is, we join the pole and the cardioid. Okay, so this is where we start. And now, I am going to move in the anti-clockwise direction in such a way that one end will always touch the cardioid. So you can see that the length of the stripe keeps on changing and the angle is also increasing. So I will show you once more. So we start here. So this is the initial position. And then I am going to sweep. It's like standing in the pole and you're standing with a broom. Okay. And you're going to sweep the entire area. I mean the required area. So you can see that that stripe is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller in length. And the angle is changing. Okay. So we are able to cover the entire region. So clearly the angle varies from 0 to 180 degrees this is 90 degrees so it exceeds 90 and clearly it's from 0 to 180 degree and the length of the stripe is from pole to the cardioid you can check it anywhere it will be from pole to cardioid okay so if you want you can check this and okay so this is what we found 
theta varies from 0 to pi and r varies from pole to cardioid but at the pole the r value is 0 and at the cardioid the r value is it's given it's given in the question is a into 1 plus cos theta so we have the limits okay that's it now it's time to integrate so i'll write the limits and remember we will put the angle first theta first and the variable second okay now how do you integrate 5 into r dr dr tells you the variable of integration is r that means you're going to integrate with respect to r now you can keep this 5 outside so you get 5 into integral r to the power 1 dr and that will be 5 into r to the power 1 plus 1 by 1 plus 1 plus c okay we have something similar here this is a multiple integral and we are going to integrate with respect to r and when you integrate with respect to r theta will be treated as a constant and if theta is a constant the sine theta will be a constant a similar story repeats i hope you got the point okay now i can see a constant here and what's the constant it's not 2 it's 1 by 2 because this is in the denominator so i'll take 1 by 2 outside now let's plug in the upper limit and lower limit and we get something like this because when you put the lower limit you're going to get zero square okay now look at this suppose you have a question like integral tan to the power 4x into x square x dx the best way to integrate this is substitution the reason is i can see the function and the derivative together so look at this whenever you have the function and the derivative together the best method for integration is substitution so look at this the derivative of 1 plus cos theta is somehow associated with sine theta so i am going to put 1 plus cos theta is equal to t in the next step i will take the differential on both sides so the derivative of 1 is 0 and the derivative of cos theta is minus sine theta so we end up with minus sine theta d theta is equal to dt but we are interested in sine theta d theta not minus sine theta d theta so i will keep it in a box so that we can substitute later okay now one more thing the variable of integration is theta and theta varies from 0 to pi our new substitute is t and t is nothing but 1 plus cos theta and when theta is equal to 0 t will be 1 plus cos 0 and cos 0 is 1 and 1 plus 1 is 2 and if theta is equal to pi t will be 1 plus cos pi and cos pi is equal to minus 1 so you get 0 and don't worry in case you don't know these values you can use your calculator but if you input cos pi in your calculator make sure you have you're using radian mode okay let's move ahead and substitute so look at this instead of 1 plus cos theta i'm going to put t and instead of sine theta d theta i'm going to use minus dt and instead of 0 theta equal to 0 i'm going to use t is equal to 2 and the same thing goes here so we end up with yeah a square goes outside okay now that's it so tell me what is integral t square dt that will be t to the power 2 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 plus c and now you can plug in the upper limit and lower limit so you get 0 cube minus 2 cube and i took this 2 and 3 
together okay that's it now let's move ahead and check out one more problem okay so is it a polar integral or a cartesian integral of course it is polar because it's in terms of dr and d theta the polar variables are used and now the region of integration is a semicircle which is above the initial line of r is equal to 2a cos theta i told you before you should be very good with the polar curves you should be able to identify the equation along with the graph anyway i'll introduce you to three circles r is equal to a it is a circle with center pole and radius a so it looks like this and r is equal to a cos theta is a circle which will pass through the pole and will have a diameter a units and finally r is equal to a sin theta is a circle which pass through the pole and diameter again a unit so you should be very good with these three graphs anyway our graph is r is equal to 2a cos theta that means this diameter is 2a and i have an yellow colored initial line and yellow colored pole and we are not interested in this part we are interested in the part above the initial line now i'll take my broom i told you we cannot draw vertical stripe or horizontal stripe all we do is we take an angular stripe so okay i'll go for my broom i'm supposed to stand in that yellow dot I am supposed to stand in the pole and take a broom and sweep the entire area. And when I sweep, I should check out two things, the angle displaced and the length of the broom. Okay, you can see that the length of the broom is not fixed. Look, the length keeps on changing. So the angle is very clear, it is like 0 to 90 degrees and the length of the broom is also obvious it's from pole to circle okay that's it so let's move ahead so you can see the animation so theta varies from 0 to pi by 2 and r varies from pole to circle and the pole is r is equal to 0 and the circle is r equal to 2a cos theta so that's it we have the integral in this form always remember theta is constant constants first and the variable inner limit now we are going to integrate with respect to r and integral r cube is r to the power 3 by 3 and when you integrate with respect to r theta will be treated as a constant now 1 by 3 goes outside and it's time to plug in the value so let's plug in upper limit minus plug in the lower limit and this one goes outside okay so we have integral 0 to pi by 2 a very familiar expression cos to the power p theta and sine to the power q theta d theta and I am sure in your first semester, you might have learned about beta gamma integrals. And beta gamma integrals are specially designed so that you can evaluate integrals in the form 0 to pi by 2 very easily. Let it be 0 to pi by 2 cos to the power p theta or let it be 0 to pi by 2 sine to the power p theta or let it be a combination beta gamma functions make the integral evaluation really easy and the formula is like 1 by 2 beta p plus 1 by 2 q plus 1 by 2 and here p is equal to 3 and q is equal to 1 so we end up with 1 by 2 3 plus 1 by 2 and sine the power is 1 so 1 plus 1 by 2 and that will be 2 1 and 
I hope you remember the connection between beta function and the gamma function this will be gamma m gamma n the whole divided by gamma m plus n and that's it okay so that's the answer so we are done for now so I'll be back with another video so as usual if you find this video useful then like share and subscribe and I hope you're finding these videos useful okay so I'll be back with another video and till then bye